CBT for Daily Life, A Practical Guide to Rewiring Your Mind Chapter 1, Understanding CBT, The Science of Thought Transformation Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, CBT, is a transformative approach to mental health that empowers individuals to take control of their thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. At its core, CBT operates on the principle that our thoughts directly influence our emotions and behaviors. By identifying and challenging negative thought patterns, also known as cognitive distortions, CBT helps foster healthier thinking habits, leading to improved emotional well-being and more constructive behaviors. This chapter introduces the basics of CBT, explores its fascinating evolution, shares a historical anecdote about its founder, Aaron Beck, discusses research on its effectiveness, and provides a practical exercise for readers to begin applying these concepts to their own lives. The Basics of Cognitive Behavioral Therapy CBT is built on three fundamental principles. 1. Identifying Negative Thought Patterns CBT teaches individuals to recognize automatic negative thoughts that arise in response to various situations. These thoughts are often habitual and can be distorted, leading to unnecessary emotional distress. For example, someone might think, I'm a failure after a minor setback, which can lead to feelings of sadness or worthlessness. 2. Challenging cognitive distortions. Once these negative thoughts are identified, the next step in CBT is to challenge them. Cognitive distortions are irrational or biased ways of thinking that reinforce negative feelings. Common distortions include all-or-nothing thinking, if I don't succeed completely, I'm a total failure, overgeneralization, I always mess things up, and catastrophizing, this is the worst thing that could happen. CBT encourages individuals to examine the evidence for and against these thoughts, and to consider more balanced, realistic perspectives. 3. Fostering Healthier Thinking Habits The final principle of CBT is replacing negative thought patterns with healthier, more constructive ones. This doesn't mean adopting blind optimism, but rather developing a more balanced and accurate view of oneself, others, and the world. By practicing this regularly, individuals can build resilience against stress, anxiety, and depression. Fun Facts – The Evolution of CBT CBT evolved from two major psychological traditions, behaviorism and cognitive psychology. Behaviorism which dominated psychology in the early 20th century, focused primarily on observable behaviors rather than internal thought processes. It emphasized that behaviors are learned and can be changed through reinforcement and punishment. Meanwhile, cognitive psychology emerged as a response to behaviorism, emphasizing the importance of mental processes, such as thinking, memory, and problem solving. CBT represents a fusion of these two schools of thought. It incorporates the behavioral focus on changing problematic actions while also addressing the cognitive aspect of changing dysfunctional thoughts. This combined approach allows CBT to target both the what, the behavior, and the why, the thought process behind it, making it one of the most effective forms of therapy. CBT is now considered one of the most researched and evidence-based forms of psychotherapy. It has been adapted for use with a variety of populations and issues, from anxiety and depression to eating disorders and substance abuse. Its structured, goal-oriented nature makes it a favorite among mental health professionals and clients alike, with countless studies demonstrating its effectiveness. Historical Anecdotes, Aaron Beck and the Birth of CBT The story of CBT's development would not be complete without mentioning its founder, Dr. Aaron T. Beck. In the 1960s, Dr. Beck, a psychiatrist, was conducting research on depression at the University of Pennsylvania. At that time, the prevailing theory was that depression was caused by anger turned inward. However, during his work, Beck noticed that his depressed patients often experienced a stream of negative thoughts that seemed automatic. These thoughts, which he termed automatic thoughts, were often irrational and distorted, yet they had a powerful impact on the patient's emotions. One day, while working with a patient named Mr. M, Beck asked the patient to write down his thoughts during a session. What they discovered were patterns of cognitive distortions, ways in which the patient's thinking was consistently negative, exaggerated, or inaccurate. 
Beck realized that these distorted thinking patterns were not merely symptoms of depression, but were maintaining and even causing the depressed mood. This revelation led Beck to develop a new approach to therapy, focused on identifying, challenging, and restructuring these negative thoughts. By helping patients recognize and modify their distorted thinking, he found that they could significantly improve their emotional well-being. This new therapeutic approach was the beginning of what we now know as CBT, and it revolutionized the field of psychology by providing a structured, practical method for addressing mental health issues. Research, the effectiveness of CBT. Over the decades, numerous studies have demonstrated the effectiveness of CBT in treating a wide range of mental health conditions. One landmark study published in the Archives of General Psychiatry in 2000 compared CBT to medication in the treatment of moderate to severe depression. The study found that CBT was as effective as antidepressants in reducing symptoms and that patients who received CBT were less likely to relapse after treatment compared to those who were treated with medication alone. Another comprehensive review published in the Lancet Psychiatry in 2015 examined over 269 studies involving more than 15,000 participants and confirmed that CBT is effective in treating anxiety disorders, obsessive-compulsive disorder, OCD, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and other mental health conditions. The review also highlighted that CBT's effects are long-lasting, particularly in reducing the risk of relapse in depression. CBT has been widely adopted in various settings, from individual therapy sessions to group workshops and even digital formats through CBT-based apps and online programs. Its adaptability and evidence-based success make it a cornerstone of modern psychological practice. Exercise Self-Talk Audit One of the most practical ways to begin using CBT in daily life is through a self-talk audit. This exercise helps you become aware of your automatic thoughts and identify any patterns of negative or distorted thinking. Here's how to do it. Carry a journal. For one full day, carry a small journal or use a note-taking app on your phone. Make a note of any significant events or situations that trigger strong emotions, whether positive or negative. Record your thoughts. Whenever you notice a shift in your mood, Pause and write down the specific thoughts running through your mind at that moment. Be as detailed as possible. For example, if you feel anxious before a meeting, write down, I'm thinking that I'll mess up and everyone will judge me. Identify cognitive distortions. At the end of the day, review your entries and identify any cognitive distortions. Are you engaging in all or nothing thinking? Catastrophizing. Mind reading. Use a list of common cognitive distortions to help label each thought. Challenge and reframe. For each identified distortion, challenge the thought by asking questions like, what evidence do I have for this thought, or is there another way to look at this situation? Then, write down a more balanced, realistic alternative thought. Reflect. Notice how challenging and reframing these thoughts affects your mood and behavior. Consider how you might apply this practice in the future to foster healthier thinking habits. By practicing this exercise regularly, you can start to see patterns in your thinking, gain greater control over your emotional responses, and build a more positive and resilient mindset. In the coming chapters, we will explore more advanced techniques and strategies for using CBT to enhance various aspects of daily life, from overcoming procrastination to building emotional resilience. But it all starts with understanding the power of your thoughts and learning how to transform them for the better. Chapter 2 Rewriting Your Story Identifying and Challenging Cognitive Distortions. Our minds are powerful storytellers, constantly interpreting events and experiences and creating narratives that shape our emotions and behaviors. However, these stories are not always accurate or helpful. Cognitive distortions, irrational or exaggerated thought patterns, often distort our perception of reality, leading to unnecessary stress, anxiety, and self-doubt. This chapter dives deeper into understanding common cognitive distortions such as all-or-nothing thinking, overgeneralization, and catastrophizing. We'll explore how these distortions impact everyone, including highly successful individuals, 
and present research showing the effects of negative thought patterns on brain chemistry and stress levels. Finally, we'll share a practical exercise called the Thought Record Worksheet to help readers identify and challenge their cognitive distortions and provide historical anecdotes about famous individuals who overcame negative thinking patterns. Common Cognitive Distortions Cognitive distortions are automatic thoughts that can negatively impact our mood and behavior. Here are some of the most common types. All or nothing thinking. This distortion, also known as black and white thinking, occurs when someone views situations in extreme terms without recognizing any middle ground. For example, thinking, if I don't perform perfectly in this presentation, I'm a total failure. Such rigid thinking can lead to a fear of making mistakes and prevent growth. Overgeneralization. This occurs when someone takes a single negative event and assumes it will happen again and again. A person might think, I was rejected for this job, so I'll never get hired anywhere. Overgeneralization leads to a sense of hopelessness and discourages individuals from trying new things. Catastrophizing. Catastrophizing involves expecting the worst possible outcome in a situation. For instance, if someone makes a minor mistake at work, they might think, I'll get fired, lose my home, and end up with nothing. This type of thinking magnifies problems out of proportion and can lead to high levels of anxiety. These distortions are not just limited to people with mental health issues, they are universal. Everyone, including highly successful individuals, experiences cognitive distortions at some point. Understanding and challenging these thought patterns is crucial to rewriting your story and fostering healthier thinking habits. Fun facts, cognitive distortions are universal. Cognitive distortions are not reserved for a specific group of people, they are a universal human experience. Studies show that even highly successful individuals, such as entrepreneurs, athletes, and artists, experience cognitive distortions regularly. For instance, imposter syndrome is a form of distorted thinking where people, despite their successes, feel like frauds who do not deserve their achievements. Many renowned figures, such as Maya Angelou and Tom Hanks, have publicly spoken about their battles with imposter syndrome. Research also shows that people are naturally wired to notice negative information more than positive. This phenomenon is known as negativity bias, a survival mechanism from our ancestors who needed to be highly attuned to threats in their environment. However, in today's world, this bias can lead to cognitive distortions and unnecessary stress, making it important to actively work against these patterns. Research, the neuroscience behind cognitive distortions. Cognitive distortions do more than just skew our perception of reality, they can also impact our brain chemistry and stress levels. Neuroscience research has shown that negative thought patterns can create and reinforce neural pathways associated with anxiety and depression. When we engage in cognitive distortions like catastrophizing, our brains release stress hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline, which prepare us for a fight-or-flight response. While this response was useful in prehistoric times when facing physical danger, it can be detrimental when it becomes a habitual reaction to everyday stressors, like a tough conversation or a challenging work deadline. Studies using functional magnetic resonance imaging (fMRI) have demonstrated that repeated negative thinking can lead to increased activity in the amygdala, the brain's fear center, and decreased activity in the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for rational decision-making and emotional regulation. This imbalance can make it more challenging to think clearly, solve problems, and manage emotions effectively. Over time, this can create a feedback loop that reinforces negative thought patterns and increases susceptibility to mental health issues. By identifying and challenging these distortions, individuals can rewire their brains, creating new neural pathways that promote more balanced and positive thinking. This process is at the heart of CBT and is supported by a wealth of research in neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to change and adapt throughout life. Exercise Thought Record Worksheet One of the most effective tools for identifying and challenging cognitive distortions is the Thought Record Worksheet. This exercise provides a structured way to reflect on thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, and to practice reframing distorted thinking. Here's how to use it. 
Situation. Write down a situation that triggered a strong emotional response. Be specific about what happened, where it happened, and who was involved. For example, I was criticized by my boss during a meeting. Automatic thoughts. Note the automatic thoughts that came to mind in response to the situation. These thoughts often occur quickly and may not initially seem irrational. Example, I'm terrible at my job, I'll probably get fired. Emotions. List the emotions you felt as a result of your thoughts. Rate the intensity of each emotion on a scale from 0 to 100. Example, anxiety 85, sadness 70. Cognitive distortions. Identify any cognitive distortions in your automatic thoughts. For example, I'm terrible at my job is an example of overgeneralization and catastrophizing. Evidence for and against. Write down the evidence that supports and contradicts your automatic thoughts. This step helps in challenging the validity of distorted thinking. Example, evidence for, I made a mistake on a project last week. Evidence against, I have received positive feedback on other projects and was recently promoted. Balanced thought, develop a more balanced and realistic thought based on the evidence. Example, I made a mistake but that doesn't mean I'm terrible at my job. I've done well in many other areas, and I can learn from this experience. Outcome. Reflect on how your emotions change when you think of the balanced thought instead of the distorted one. Re-rate the intensity of your emotions to see the difference. Practicing the thought record worksheet regularly can help you recognize patterns in your thinking, challenge cognitive distortions, and create healthier, more balanced thoughts that lead to better emotional well-being. Historical Anecdotes, Overcoming Negative Thinking Patterns Many famous individuals have experienced negative thinking patterns and cognitive distortions, yet they have managed to overcome them and rewrite their stories. One such example is Albert Einstein, who struggled with feelings of inadequacy early in his academic career. Einstein failed his university entrance exams on his first attempt, leading to self-doubt and discouraging thoughts. However, he reframed his perceived failures as opportunities for growth and persisted in his studies. His ability to challenge his cognitive distortions about his intelligence and potential allowed him to push through setbacks and become one of the greatest scientists in history. Another example is J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series. Before her success, Rowling faced numerous rejections from publishers and struggled with depression. She often doubted her abilities as a writer and faced financial difficulties. However, by challenging her cognitive distortions and reframing her narrative, she persisted and ultimately succeeded in creating one of the best-selling book series of all time. These examples highlight that even the most successful people are not immune to cognitive distortions. What sets them apart is their ability to recognize these patterns and actively challenge them, allowing them to rewrite their stories and achieve their goals. Identifying and challenging cognitive distortions is a powerful step toward rewriting your story. Remember, even the most successful people have faced these mental hurdles, and with practice, you too can develop healthier thinking habits that pave the way for a more fulfilling and balanced life. Chapter 3, The Power of Behavioral Activation, Small Steps to Big Change. Behavioral activation, BA, is a core component of cognitive behavioral therapy that emphasizes the importance of engaging in meaningful and positive activities to improve mood and break the cycle of avoidance and inactivity. Unlike some therapeutic approaches that primarily focus on introspection or analyzing past experiences, BA is action-oriented and grounded in the idea that small, deliberate steps can lead to significant changes in one's emotional and psychological state. This chapter delves into the concept of behavioral activation, highlights fun facts about the mental health benefits of simple activities, presents research evidence supporting the effectiveness of BA in treating depression, provides a practical exercise for readers called activity scheduling, and shares historical anecdotes about how notable figures used activities to manage their moods. The Concept of Behavioral Activation in CBT Behavioral activation is based on the premise 
that our behaviors and actions significantly impact our mood and overall mental health. When people feel depressed, anxious, or overwhelmed, they often fall into patterns of avoidance, withdrawal, and inactivity. This avoidance may seem like a protective mechanism to avoid discomfort, but it can actually reinforce negative emotions and maintain or worsen a depressive state. The goal of BA is to break this cycle by encouraging individuals to engage in activities that are enjoyable, meaningful, or provide a sense of accomplishment. By doing so, they can experience positive emotions, build confidence, and disrupt the negative feedback loop that often accompanies depression and anxiety. BA doesn't require massive life changes, rather, it focuses on small, manageable steps that can be incorporated into daily life, leading to gradual yet profound improvements in mood and well being. Key principles of behavioral activation include Identifying avoidance patterns Understanding what activities or situations an individual is avoiding and why This may involve recognizing fear of failure, fear of judgment, or lack of motivation as underlying reasons for avoidance Planning positive activities Developing a structured plan to reintroduce enjoyable and rewarding activities, starting with small, manageable tasks Breaking down tasks, making large tasks more manageable by breaking them down into smaller, actionable steps. For example, instead of clean the house, the goal could be clean the kitchen for 10 minutes. Monitoring progress, keeping track of activities and reflecting on how they affect mood, providing insight into what types of activities are most beneficial. Fun facts, small activities with big mental health benefits. Did you know that simple activities like gardening, dancing, or even spending time with a pet can significantly improve mental health. Here are some quirky and fascinating facts about how engaging in everyday activities can boost your mood. Gardening. A study published in the Journal of Health Psychology found that gardening can lower cortisol levels, the stress hormone, and boost mood more effectively than reading indoors. The repetitive, mindful nature of planting, weeding, and tending to plants provides a therapeutic and calming effect, often referred to as horticultural therapy. Dancing. Dancing is not only a fun way to stay active but also a powerful mood enhancer. Research has shown that dancing can release endorphins, improve body image, and enhance social bonds. In fact, some studies suggest that dancing can be as effective as traditional forms of exercise in reducing symptoms of depression and anxiety. Walking in nature. Known as forest bathing in Japan, spending time in nature can lower heart rate, reduce anxiety, and improve mood. Studies have found that even short walks in a park or green space can significantly reduce symptoms of stress and improve mental clarity. Pet therapy. Interacting with animals, whether it's playing fetch with a dog or watching fish in an aquarium, has been shown to lower blood pressure, reduce anxiety, and increase feelings of happiness and relaxation. Pets provide companionship, a sense of purpose, and a reason to engage in daily activities. These simple, everyday activities demonstrate that even minor changes in behavior can have significant positive effects on mental health. Exercise, activity scheduling. One of the most practical tools for incorporating behavioral activation into daily life is activity scheduling. This exercise involves planning and incorporating specific, enjoyable, and meaningful activities into your routine. Here's how to do it. Identify activities. Start by listing activities you enjoy or that provide a sense of accomplishment. These can range from simple tasks like taking a walk, cooking a favorite meal, or calling a friend, to more involved activities like joining a dance class or volunteering. Set small, achievable goals. Choose a few activities from your list and break them down into manageable steps. For example, if you enjoy painting but haven't done it in a while, your goal could be set up painting supplies rather than create a masterpiece. Schedule activities. Use a planner or calendar to schedule these activities throughout the week. Make sure to choose specific days and times and treat these activities as non-negotiable appointments with yourself. Monitor your mood. After completing each activity, take a moment to reflect on how it affected your mood. Did it increase your energy levels? Did it provide a sense of satisfaction or joy? 
Keeping a journal can help track progress and recognize patterns. Adjust as needed. Not every activity will have a significant impact, and that's okay. Use your observations to adjust your schedule and focus more on activities that have a positive effect. By consistently scheduling and engaging in positive activities, you can start to see gradual but meaningful improvements in your mood and overall well-being. Historical Anecdotes, Winston Churchill and the Power of Painting One famous historical figure who understood the power of engaging in positive activities to manage mood was Winston Churchill. Despite his role as a powerful leader, Churchill struggled with bouts of depression, which he referred to as his black dog. To manage his mental health, Churchill turned to painting, a hobby he discovered later in life. Churchill found solace in painting landscapes and still lifes, which provided him with a creative outlet and a way to detach from the stresses of leadership during World War II. He wrote about his experience in his book, Painting as a Pastime, noting that painting helped him find balance and peace amid chaos. His love for painting allowed him to engage in a focused and fulfilling activity that improved his mood and provided a sense of accomplishment. Similarly, the American novelist Ernest Hemingway found that engaging in physical activities like boxing and fishing helped him manage his moods and provided a counterbalance to his intense writing sessions. These activities allowed Hemingway to stay connected to the present moment and clear his mind of intrusive thoughts. These examples show that even the most successful and influential individuals have used behavioral activation principles to manage their mental health. Engaging in positive activities, whether it's painting, dancing, gardening, or simply walking in nature, can be a powerful tool for breaking the cycle of avoidance and improving overall well-being. Behavioral activation is a simple yet powerful approach to improving mental health through action. By engaging in positive activities, breaking the cycle of avoidance, and consistently scheduling rewarding tasks, you can make small steps that lead to significant changes in your mood and outlook on life. Chapter 4 Mindfulness and CBT Living in the Present In a world filled with constant distractions and stressors, it is easy to become trapped in negative thought patterns, overwhelming emotions, and a sense of disconnection from the present moment. Integrating mindfulness with cognitive behavioral therapy offers a powerful solution to this modern dilemma. This approach, known as mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, MBCT, combines the strengths of both practices to help individuals stay present, manage stress and anxiety, and reduce the tendency to ruminate on negative thoughts. In this chapter, we will explore how MBCT works, provide fun facts about the origins of mindfulness practices and their adaptation in modern therapy, present research demonstrating the benefits of mindfulness in enhancing emotional regulation, offer a practical exercise called the 54321 grounding technique, and share the story of how John Kabat-Zinn developed the concept of mindfulness-based stress reduction, MBSR, which laid the groundwork for MBCT. Integrating Mindfulness with CBT, the Power of MBCT Mindfulness-based cognitive therapy is an innovative approach that combines the cognitive restructuring techniques of CBT with the principles of mindfulness meditation. While CBT focuses on identifying and challenging negative thought patterns, mindfulness teaches individuals to become aware of these thoughts without judgment, allowing them to observe their mental processes from a distance. This combination creates a powerful therapeutic tool that addresses both the content and the process of thinking. The core idea of MBCT is to help individuals break free from the cycle of rumination, a repetitive thinking pattern that often underlies depression, anxiety, and stress. Rumination involves dwelling on negative thoughts and experiences, which can lead to a downward spiral of emotions. By practicing mindfulness, Individuals learn to observe their thoughts as passing events in the mind rather than getting entangled in them. This awareness creates a mental space that allows for more conscious and balanced responses to life's challenges. MBCT also emphasizes the importance of being present in the moment. Rather than getting lost in worries about the future or regrets about the past, mindfulness encourages individuals to ground themselves in the here and now. This presence allows for greater emotional regulation, 
as individuals are more attuned to their immediate experiences and can respond with greater clarity and calmness. Fun Facts The Origins and Modern Adaptation of Mindfulness Mindfulness has deep roots in ancient Eastern traditions, particularly in Buddhism, where it is known as Sati, Pali, or Smrta, Sanskrit, meaning to remember or to be aware. It was originally practiced as a way to cultivate awareness, compassion, and wisdom on the path to enlightenment. However, the practice of mindfulness is not limited to Buddhism, it also has parallels in Hinduism, Taoism, and other contemplative traditions that emphasize awareness and presence. In the modern world, mindfulness has been adapted for therapeutic use, especially in combination with cognitive behavioral approaches. One of the most interesting adaptations is how these ancient practices have been stripped of their religious connotations to be more accessible to a wider audience. For example, mindfulness is now widely practiced in secular contexts such as schools, workplaces, and hospitals, emphasizing its mental health benefits. Did you know that mindful breathing practices, which are central to mindfulness, can alter brain activity within just a few minutes? Studies have shown that mindful breathing can increase activity in the prefrontal cortex, the area responsible for executive functions and emotional regulation, and decrease activity in the amygdala, the brain's fear center. This neurological shift helps explain why mindfulness can be so effective in managing anxiety and stress. Exercise 5 a 4 3 2 1 Grounding Technique One of the most effective mindfulness exercises for managing anxiety and staying grounded in the present moment is the 5 4 3 2 1 Grounding Technique. This simple yet powerful exercise engages all five senses to bring you back to the here and now, reducing anxiety and enhancing awareness. Here's how to practice the 5 4 3 2 1 Grounding Technique. Five things you can see. Look around you and identify five things you can see. It could be the color of the walls, a picture on the wall, or the shape of a nearby object. Describe each one in detail to yourself. Four things you can touch. Identify four things you can touch. Focus on the texture, temperature, and how it feels against your skin. For example, feel the fabric of your clothing, the smooth surface of a table, or the warmth of a cup of tea. Three things you can hear. Listen carefully and identify three sounds. They could be the hum of a computer, the chirping of birds outside, or the distant sound of traffic. Notice each sound's quality and rhythm. Two things you can smell, identify two scents. If you're in a place without noticeable scents, you can carry something with you, like a vial of essential oil or a favorite perfume. Notice the subtleties of each scent. One thing you can taste, finally, identify one thing you can taste. It could be the aftertaste of coffee or a mint. Focus on the taste and how it lingers on your palate. This exercise helps distract the mind from anxiety-provoking thoughts and grounds you in the present moment by engaging all of your senses. Practicing this technique regularly can help you manage anxiety more effectively and stay present. Historical Anecdotes, John Cabot zinn The modern integration of mindfulness into therapy can largely be attributed to John Kabat-Zinn, an American professor of medicine who developed the concept of mindfulness-based stress reduction in the late 1970s. Kabat-Zinn was influenced by his studies in Buddhist meditation and the teachings of Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh. He believed that mindfulness practices could be adapted and used in a secular therapeutic context to help people manage stress, pain, and illness. Kabat Zinn's work began at the University of Massachusetts Medical School, where he established the Stress Reduction Clinic. He developed an eight week MBSR program that combined mindfulness meditation, body awareness, and yoga to help patients cope with chronic pain and stress related conditions. The program focused on teaching participants how to become more aware of their thoughts, feelings, and bodily sensations without judgment, allowing them to respond to stress more calmly and effectively. The success of MBSR in clinical settings laid the groundwork for mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. In the 1990s, psychologists Zindel Siegel, Mark Williams, and John Teasdale expanded on Kabat-Zinn's work, integrating mindfulness with CBT to create MBCT, specifically targeting relapse prevention in depression. 
Their research demonstrated that MBCT could help individuals recognize the early signs of depression and intervene with mindfulness practices to prevent full-blown depressive episodes. Kabat-Zinn's pioneering work has had a profound impact on the field of psychology and medicine, making mindfulness an essential tool in modern therapeutic practices. His approach has inspired countless therapists, researchers and practitioners worldwide to explore and adopt mindfulness as a powerful method for enhancing mental health and well-being. Chapter 5 – Overcoming Procrastination, Breaking the Cycle of Avoidance Procrastination is a common problem that affects people from all walks of life. It is often described as the gap between intention and action, when we want to do something but keep putting it off. While it may seem like a simple issue of laziness or poor time management, procrastination is often rooted in deeper psychological processes, such as underlying beliefs, fears, and avoidance behaviors. Cognitive behavioral therapy offers effective techniques for overcoming procrastination by addressing these core issues, helping individuals break the cycle of avoidance and take meaningful steps toward their goals. This chapter explores how CBT techniques can help tackle procrastination, presents fun facts about the psychological phenomena associated with procrastination, highlights research connecting procrastination with perfectionism and anxiety, provides a practical exercise called the five-minute rule, and shares historical anecdotes about how famous writers like Victor Hugo overcame procrastination to complete their masterpieces. CBT Techniques for Overcoming Procrastination at its core, procrastination is a form of avoidance. It involves delaying tasks that we perceive as difficult, unpleasant, or overwhelming. CBT can be highly effective in addressing procrastination by focusing on the underlying thoughts and beliefs that drive avoidance behaviors. Here are some key CBT techniques for overcoming procrastination. Identifying negative beliefs and fears Procrastination often stems from negative beliefs and fears such as fear of failure, fear of criticism, or perfectionism. For example, someone might think, if I can't do this perfectly, there's no point in starting, or, if I fail, everyone will think I'm incompetent. CBT helps individuals identify these beliefs and challenge them, replacing them with more realistic and constructive thoughts. Breaking down tasks One common reason for procrastination is that tasks seem too large or daunting. CBT encourages breaking down larger tasks into smaller, more manageable steps. Instead of focusing on the overwhelming idea of writing a book, for instance, one can focus on writing one page. This shift reduces the psychological burden and makes starting the task feel more achievable. Cognitive restructuring Cognitive restructuring involves challenging distorted thinking patterns that contribute to procrastination. For example, the belief, I must always be perfect, can be restructured to, it's okay to make mistakes, progress is more important than perfection. By reframing these thoughts, individuals can reduce the anxiety and fear that often accompany procrastination. Behavioral activation. This technique focuses on action rather than overthinking. By encouraging individuals to take immediate action, even if it's a small step, CBT helps break the cycle of avoidance and builds momentum for continued progress. This approach is particularly effective for tasks that feel overwhelming or tedious. Fun Facts The Zigarnik Effect and Procrastination Have you ever noticed that you can easily recall incomplete tasks, but once a task is finished, it quickly fades from your memory? This phenomenon is known as the Zigarnik Effect, named after Russian psychologist Bluma Zigarnik. In the 1920s, Zigarnik discovered that people tend to remember uncompleted or interrupted tasks better than completed ones. The Zigarnik effect suggests that our minds are naturally inclined to dwell on unfinished business, creating a sense of cognitive tension that pushes us to complete the task. However, when we procrastinate, we often get caught in a cycle where the tension builds up, leading to feelings of guilt, anxiety, and overwhelm, which further reinforces avoidance. Understanding the Zigarnik effect can be empowering when dealing with procrastination. By simply starting a task, no matter how small, you can harness this psychological phenomenon to your advantage. Once a task is initiated, the brain becomes more inclined to see it through to completion, 
reducing the temptation to procrastinate. Research, procrastination, perfectionism, and anxiety. Research has shown that procrastination is not just about poor time management, it is closely linked to psychological factors like perfectionism and anxiety. A study published in the Journal of Counseling Psychology found that individuals who struggle with perfectionism are more likely to procrastinate. The fear of not meeting their own high standards can cause them to delay starting tasks, especially those perceived as challenging or requiring significant effort. Another study in personality and individual differences highlighted the relationship between procrastination and anxiety. The researchers found that people who procrastinate often experience heightened levels of anxiety, which further perpetuates avoidance behaviors. The cycle of procrastination and anxiety becomes self-reinforcing. The more we avoid a task, the more anxiety we feel about it, and the more we continue to procrastinate. CBT addresses this vicious cycle by helping individuals recognize the cognitive distortions driving their anxiety and perfectionism, such as, if it's not perfect, it's a failure, or I can't handle the stress of this task. Through cognitive restructuring, Individuals learn to replace these distorted beliefs with more balanced and realistic thoughts, reducing the psychological barriers that lead to procrastination. Exercise, the five-minute rule. One of the most effective tools for overcoming procrastination is the five-minute rule. This CBT-inspired technique encourages you to commit to working on a task for just five minutes. Here's how it works. Choose a task. Identify a task you've been putting off, whether it's writing a report, cleaning your desk, or starting a workout routine. Set a timer for 5 minutes, commit to working on the task for just 5 minutes. The goal is not to finish the task but to start it. Focus on the task, begin working on the task without overthinking. For these 5 minutes, focus solely on the task at hand without distractions. Reassess after 5 minutes. When the timer goes off, decide whether to stop or continue. Most often, once you start, you'll find it easier to keep going. The 5-minute rule leverages the Zigarnik effect by helping you initiate a task, reducing the psychological burden of getting started. Once you've begun, the cognitive tension created by the unfinished task can motivate you to continue, breaking the cycle of procrastination. Historical Anecdotes Victor Hugo and Creative Tactics to Overcome Procrastination Even some of history's greatest minds struggled with procrastination. One famous example is Victor Hugo, the renowned French author of Les Miserables and the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Hugo was known for his tendency to procrastinate, often delaying his writing until deadlines loomed dangerously close. To overcome his procrastination and complete his masterpieces, Hugo devised a creative strategy. During the writing of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Hugo locked away all his clothes and donned nothing but a large shawl. This self-imposed imprisonment in his home meant he had no choice but to focus on writing as he was unable to go out or entertain visitors. This unusual tactic forced him to concentrate on his work and helped him complete his novel within the set deadline. Another well-known writer who battled procrastination was Douglas Adams, the author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Adams famously quipped, I love deadlines. I like the whooshing sound they make as they fly by. His habit of procrastination led to tight deadlines and intense periods of writing. While not an ideal approach, Adams managed to harness his creative energy under pressure, producing some of his most iconic works. These anecdotes remind us that procrastination is a challenge faced by even the most creative and accomplished individuals. The key to overcoming it lies in understanding the underlying reasons for delay and employing practical strategies like CBT techniques to break them. Chapter 6 Emotional Resilience Building a Strong Foundation Emotional resilience is the ability to adapt, recover, and grow stronger in the face of life's challenges, setbacks, and stressors. It is not about avoiding difficulties, but about learning how to navigate them effectively. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, CBT, offers powerful tools for building emotional resilience by teaching individuals how to manage their thoughts, emotions, and behaviors more constructively. 
This chapter will explore how CBT techniques can help develop emotional resilience, share fun facts about resilience training, present research findings on the effectiveness of cognitive restructuring and problem-solving skills in enhancing resilience, provide a practical exercise using the ABCDE model, and include historical anecdotes of resilient figures like Nelson Mandela, who used cognitive techniques to maintain hope and strength during adversity. Building Emotional Resilience with CBT Techniques CBT provides several effective strategies for building emotional resilience. At its core, CBT helps individuals recognize and challenge negative thought patterns, develop problem-solving skills, and cultivate a more balanced and optimistic outlook. Here are some key CBT techniques that can help strengthen emotional resilience. Cognitive restructuring. This technique involves identifying and challenging irrational or negative thoughts that can undermine emotional resilience. By replacing these thoughts with more balanced and constructive ones, individuals can build a stronger foundation for coping with stress and adversity. For example, instead of thinking, I can't handle this, cognitive restructuring helps shift the thought to, this is challenging, but I have faced challenges before and can manage this one too. Exposure to stressors. Gradual exposure to stressors, a CBT technique often used for anxiety and phobias, can also help build resilience. By gradually facing and handling uncomfortable situations, individuals learn that they can cope, which increases their confidence and emotional strength. Problem-solving skills. Developing problem-solving skills is a critical component of emotional resilience. CBT teaches individuals to approach problems systematically, identifying the issue, brainstorming possible solutions, evaluating options, and taking action. This process fosters a sense of control and competence, which is vital for resilience. Mindfulness and acceptance. Combining mindfulness practices with CBT, such as in mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, MBCT, can help individuals stay grounded in the present moment, accept difficult emotions without judgment, and respond to stressors with greater clarity and calmness. By integrating these CBT techniques into daily life, individuals can enhance their ability to cope with adversity, recover from setbacks, and maintain a sense of optimism and hope. Fun Facts – Resilience Training for Astronauts Building emotional resilience is crucial, not only for dealing with everyday stressors, but also for more extreme environments, like space travel. Did you know that astronauts undergo rigorous resilience training to prepare for the psychological challenges of space missions? Astronauts face a range of stressors, from isolation and confinement to the risk of technical failures, and the psychological strain of living in a zero-gravity environment. NASA's training programs include psychological resilience exercises that incorporate elements of CBT, such as cognitive restructuring, stress management techniques, and mindfulness practices, to help astronauts manage anxiety, maintain focus, and remain calm under pressure. For example, astronauts are trained to use cognitive reframing to handle stressful situations. Instead of thinking, this situation is dangerous and I might fail, they learn to think, I have trained for this and I know what steps to take to manage this situation. This cognitive shift can significantly impact their ability to cope with the intense psychological demands of space missions. Exercise, the ABCDE model. One of the most practical CBT tools for building emotional resilience is the ABCDE model developed by psychologist Dr. Albert Ellis. This model helps individuals dispute negative beliefs and cultivate optimism by breaking down their thoughts and challenging irrational thinking patterns. Here's how the ABCDE model works. A. Adversity. Identify an adverse event or situation that is causing stress or negative emotions. For example, I received critical feedback at work. B. Belief. Identify the belief or thought that arises in response to the adversity. This is often an automatic, negative thought. For example, I'm not good at my job and my boss is disappointed in me. C. Consequence. Identify the emotional and behavioral consequences of that belief. For example, I feel anxious and want to avoid my boss. D. Disputation. 
Challenge and dispute the negative belief by asking questions like, is this thought based on facts or assumptions, or what evidence do I have that contradicts this belief? A balanced thought might be, the feedback was constructive and it doesn't mean I'm bad at my job. I can use this to improve. E. Effect. Notice the positive effect of disputing the negative belief on your emotions and behaviors. For example, I feel more confident and motivated to apply the feedback and improve. By practicing the ABCDE model regularly, individuals can learn to challenge their negative beliefs, cultivate a more optimistic mindset, and build emotional resilience. Historical Anecdotes Nelson Mandela's Resilience in Adversity Few figures in history exemplify emotional resilience better than Nelson Mandela, who spent 27 years in prison under South Africa's apartheid regime. Despite facing unimaginable hardship, Mandela maintained hope, strength, and a vision for a better future. One of the key factors that contributed to Mandela's resilience was his ability to use cognitive techniques to maintain a positive and constructive mindset. Mandela often spoke of the importance of keeping a mental fortress during his imprisonment. He refused to let his circumstances define his outlook, choosing instead to focus on personal growth, understanding, and forgiveness. One of his famous quotes, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul, reflects his belief in taking control of his thoughts and emotions, regardless of external circumstances. Mandela also used problem solving skills to maintain his resilience. During his time in prison, he continued to educate himself, learning about law, politics, and languages, and even encouraged fellow prisoners to do the same. This proactive approach to his confinement not only kept his mind engaged, but also prepared him for leadership roles after his release. Mandela's ability to maintain his resilience through cognitive techniques like reframing his thoughts, focusing on positive actions, and maintaining hope, enabled him to emerge from prison as a powerful leader and advocate for peace and reconciliation. Building emotional resilience is about more than just bouncing back from adversity. It's about learning how to face challenges with strength, adaptability, and a positive mindset. Chapter 7. Sustaining the Change, Making CBT a Lifelong Practice Cognitive behavioral therapy is not just a short-term intervention. It is a powerful tool that, when practiced consistently, can lead to long-term mental well-being. The techniques and strategies of CBT help individuals manage their thoughts, emotions, and behaviors more effectively, but the key to lasting change is making these techniques a part of daily life. This chapter explores practical strategies for incorporating CBT into everyday routines, highlights quirky habits of successful people who use CBT-like techniques, discusses research on the long-term benefits of CBT, offers a personalized CBT toolkit exercise to help readers tailor CBT practices to their needs, and shares a modern success story of how an athlete or entrepreneur uses CBT to stay mentally strong and focused. Incorporating CBT into daily life for long-term well-being. To sustain the benefits of CBT, it is crucial to integrate its principles into daily routines. CBT is most effective when its techniques become habitual, helping individuals build resilience against stress, anxiety, and negative thinking. Here are some strategies to help make CBT a lifelong practice. Daily Thought Records Keeping a daily thought record is one of the foundational practices of CBT. By regularly writing down thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, individuals can become more aware of their cognitive distortions and learn to challenge them. Consistent use of thought records can help maintain emotional balance and prevent negative patterns from taking root. Scheduled reflection time. Setting aside time each day for self-reflection is essential for reinforcing CBT practices. This could be a few minutes in the morning or before bed, where you reflect on the day's events, identify any cognitive distortions, and apply cognitive restructuring techniques to reframe negative thoughts. Mindfulness Integration Incorporating mindfulness techniques, such as mindful breathing or the 54321 grounding exercise, into daily routines can help individuals stay present and manage stress more effectively. Even brief moments of mindfulness throughout the day can reinforce the mental clarity and emotional regulation that CBT promotes. Behavioral Activation 
Regularly engaging in activities that bring joy, fulfillment, or a sense of accomplishment is crucial for maintaining mental well-being. Planning and scheduling these activities in advance can help prevent avoidance behaviors and foster a positive mindset. Self-compassion practices. Practicing self-compassion is a vital part of sustaining the change with CBT. Being kind to oneself, especially during setbacks, helps prevent the cycle of self-criticism that can lead to anxiety and depression. Techniques such as writing a self-compassion letter or repeating self-affirming phrases can be incorporated into daily routines. Goal setting and monitoring. Set short-term and long-term goals for practicing CBT techniques. Regularly monitor progress and adjust goals as needed. Keeping track of successes, however small, can provide motivation and reinforce positive changes. Fun facts, quirky habits of successful people using CBT techniques. Many successful individuals use CBT-like techniques to maintain mental strength and focus in their daily lives. Here are some quirky habits of famous people who practice principles aligned with CBT. Tim Ferriss, author of The 4-Hour Workweek, uses a technique similar to cognitive restructuring called fear setting where he identifies his fears, writes them down, and then challenges them by assessing their likelihood and impact. This practice helps him manage anxiety and take calculated risks. Oprah Winfrey is known for her daily practice of gratitude journaling, which aligns with CBT's emphasis on cognitive restructuring. By focusing on positive aspects of her life, she challenges negative thought patterns and cultivates a sense of abundance and well-being. Serena Williams, one of the greatest tennis players of all time, uses visualization techniques before matches. This practice involves mentally rehearsing various game scenarios, a technique that aligns with CBT's cognitive rehearsal to prepare for challenges and develop a resilient mindset. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, practices first principles thinking, a form of cognitive restructuring where he breaks down complex problems into their fundamental components and reconstructs them from scratch. This helps him avoid cognitive distortions like overgeneralization and develop innovative solutions. These examples show that the principles of CBT, challenging negative thoughts, focusing on what can be controlled, and maintaining a positive mindset, are practices that many successful people use to achieve their goals and maintain mental well-being. Exercise, Personalized CBT Toolkit To make CBT a lifelong practice, it's essential to create a personalized CBT toolkit, a set of go-to CBT tools, exercises, and strategies that are tailored to your specific needs and preferences. Here's how to build your toolkit. Identify your triggers, Write down the common situations, thoughts, or emotions that trigger negative thinking patterns or emotional distress. This could include situations like social events, work stress, or personal conflicts. Select relevant CBT tools. Choose specific CBT tools and techniques that are most effective for managing your triggers. For example, if you often experience catastrophic thinking, cognitive restructuring may be useful. If you tend to avoid difficult tasks, Behavioral activation techniques like the 5-minute rule might be more relevant. Create a list of go-to exercises. Compile a list of CBT exercises that you find most helpful, such as daily thought records, the ABCDE model, mindfulness practices, or relaxation techniques. Keep this list in a place where you can easily refer to it, like a notebook, phone app, or journal. Set reminders for practice. Incorporate regular reminders to practice your CBT tools. This could be through calendar alerts, sticky notes, or daily to-do lists. Consistency is key to making CBT a habit. Reflect and adjust. Regularly review your toolkit and adjust it as needed. As you grow and change, some tools may become less relevant, and new ones may need to be added. By creating a personalized CBT toolkit, you can ensure that you have a set of effective strategies to turn to whenever you face challenges, helping you stay mentally strong and focused. Historical Anecdotes, a modern success story, Michael Phelps. One of the most inspiring modern success stories of using CBT techniques to maintain mental strength and focus is that of Michael Phelps, the most decorated Olympian of all time. Phelps has openly shared his struggles with anxiety, depression, and suicidal thoughts. To manage his mental health, 
he turned to CBT techniques. Phelps uses a combination of visualization, cognitive restructuring, and mindfulness to maintain his mental focus. Before every race, he visualizes every possible scenario, from a perfect race to unforeseen challenges, helping him prepare mentally and emotionally. This form of cognitive rehearsal, a CBT technique, allows him to stay calm and focused, even under immense pressure. Phelps also practices cognitive restructuring to manage negative thoughts and self-doubt. He focuses on replacing thoughts like, I can't do this, with I've trained for this and I'm ready, helping him build confidence and resilience. His story is a powerful example of how CBT techniques can help individuals manage their mental health, overcome challenges, and achieve extraordinary success. Making CBT a lifelong practice requires consistent effort and a commitment to incorporating its principles into daily routines. By creating a personalized CBT toolkit, practicing cognitive restructuring, mindfulness, and problem-solving skills regularly, and learning from the habits of successful people, anyone can build a strong foundation for long-term mental well-being. The benefits of CBT extend far beyond therapy sessions. They offer a pathway to a resilient, focused, and emotionally balanced life. With persistence and dedication, CBT can become a valuable companion in your journey to sustained mental health.